This video is sponsored by Audible. For a free audiobook, use the link in the description below. Welcome to part 14 of the series where I'm tier ranking all 256 type of twin born combinations from Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn series. This week, only one of the names of these twin born combinations came from the Mistborn Adventure Game rulebook. The other 15 were created by myself and other users in the Exploring the Cosmere Discord server. If you'd like to help name twin born types for the next part in this series, or just talk about the Cosmere in general, make sure you join the server. That'll be linked in the description below. The first Twinborn combination we have is Restrainer. Restrainers can use their Alimantic Brass to soothe the emotions of others, and they can use their Ferrochemical Pewter to store physical strength. I actually really like this combination because they can coerce people with their emotional Alimancy, but if that fails, then they can fall back and rely on their brute strength thanks to their Ferrochemical Pewter. Emotional Alimancy, like Alimantic Brass and Alimantic Zinc, are great for social situations. I'm not gonna dive too deep into the details of each power since this is part 14. So if you haven't seen the other parts of the series, I'll link the playlist in the description. I've went into all of these powers in great detail in all of the other parts. I could see a restrainer being really good on law enforcement teams. They could be the person that does the interview process or the interrogation process and their alimantic brass should make it so much easier for them to get the perpetrator to admit to their wrongdoings. Although I could see that backfiring and maybe make people confess to things that they didn't even do. Do you think there would be laws on Skadriel against the use of emotional allomancy during interrogations? I feel like that would be smart. I also like to think that a restrainer might walk around looking extremely scrawny because they're just constantly storing like 10% to 20% of their strength, which makes their muscles shrink. And then everybody would just think they were just this really skinny scrawny person but then at the right time they could tap all that strength and bulk up. I think Restrainer is a really good combination. I'm putting it in S tier. Next up we have Skipper. Skippers can use their Alimantic Cadmium to slow down time in a bubble around themselves and they can use their Ferrochemical Chromium to store fortune. So as we've talked about in previous parts, Ferrochemical Chromium is uh, one of the abilities that we really don't know too much about. In the Ars Arcanum it makes it seem that a Ferrochemical Chromium user can store their luck in their chromium mind and then tap that luck at a later time. But we know from other books in the Cosmere that fortune is used by the shards and things like that to kind of predict the future. It lets you see different permutations of what could happen. So until we see a uh, ferrochemical chromium on page, we really don't know what it's going to do. I hope we see it in Era 3. And then Alimantic Cadmium, we see Marisi use this in Era 2. She throws up a Cadmium bubble around herself and everything from her perspective outside of that bubble is moving rapidly. So it could be good for situations where, let's say uh, you restrained a suspect and you're a law enforcement officer and you sent for backup. You could throw up a cadmium bubble around yourself and the person that you caught. And then from your perspective, backup would arrive much quicker than just waiting in normal time. I think Skipper has the potential to be a really good combination, but it all hinges on how ferrochemical chromium actually works out. Eh, for now, I'm going to have to put it in B tier. Next up, we have Breathtaker. Breathtaker Twinborn can use their Alimantic Chromium to wipe the Alimantic reserves of a target, and they can use their Ferrochemical Cadmium to store breath. So to use your Alimantic Chromium, you need to physically touch another Alimancer, and then when you burn your Chromium, if the other Alimancer has any Alimantic reserves within themselves, those reserves will vanish. And it should also work on other forms of investiture. So theoretically, a person using Alimantic Chromium could leech like a Knight's Radiant of their Stormlight. I'm not sure if it would have any effect on like a magic system like breaths on Nalthus. That'd be interesting to see though. If you could just leech a person's breaths and leave them as a drab, that almost seems OP. And then Ferrochemical Cadmium, I personally don't think that it's a great power. I know that some people in the comments have said that the fact that you can highly oxygenate your blood is actually really good. I mean, it would give you more stamina. It's basically like blood doping, which people do in real life to, uh, to help them in athletic performances. So I do see some benefit and I think it will play a big role in the space age of the Cosmere. Ah, this one's kind of tough to place. Is it better than Skipper? 
I think it is better than Skipper, but it's still gonna go in B tier for me. Next up we have Shroud. Shrouds can use their Alimantic Copper to hide the Alimantic pulses of themselves and those around them, and they can use their Ferrochemical Bronze to store wakefulness. The name Shroud comes from the Mistborn Adventure Game rulebook, and they have the reputation of being great allies to criminal crews. And yes, I think that's a very accurate reputation, because Alimantic Copper we saw used extensively in Arrow 1 by Clubs, the a smoker on Kelsier's crew. He pretty much just constantly hung out at their safe house and would constantly be burning his alimantic copper. And that kept the crew and the safe house safe from the prying eyes of the steel ministry. And I think ferrochemical bronze is a pretty good combination to have along with alimantic copper because you could store up a bunch of wakefulness. That way, if you need to burn your copper for an extended period of time to keep yourself and your crew safe, then you could just start tapping all the excess wakefulness that you've stored up in your bronze mind. Fair Chemical Bronze also has another benefit. It can help you fall asleep quicker. You can start storing your wakefulness to the point where you pass out, essentially. So you can choose when to sleep on demand. And Alimantic Copper also makes the person burning it immune to emotional alimancy. All right, I'm gonna put Shroud in B tier. I'm actually gonna move Breathtaker up to A tier. I thought about it a little more, and I think that being able to highly oxygenate your blood would be a pretty good benefit along with Alimantic Chromium. The Breathtaker could get really good at martial arts for instance and just be constantly leeching the people that he's fighting. And I think that highly oxygenating their blood would just enhance that ability of being able to fight effectively. Next up, we have Drone. Drones can use their Alimantic Duralumin to enhance the current metal burned, and they can use their Ferrochemical Aluminum to store identity. Uh, Alimantic Duralumin is useless if that's your only Alimantic ability. You can't burn any other Alimantic metals, so you can't enhance the power of those other metals. And Ferrochemical Aluminum is another Ferrochemical ability that we don't know much about. It doesn't seem useful on its own at all. Drones going straight to D tier. Next up, we have Choreographer. Choreographers can use their Alimantic Electrum to reveal their future, and they can use their Ferrochemical Pewter to store physical strength. Alimantic Electrum isn't very useful. The only time that we've seen it be of great use is in Era 1 whenever you're fighting against an Alimancer burning ATM. You can burn Alimantic Electrum to counteract the ATM shadows. And I definitely don't see these two abilities having any synergy whatsoever. So this is a pretty bad combination. Choreographer is going in C tier. Next up, we have Aftertaste. Aftertaste Twinborn can use their Alimantic Gold to reveal their past self, and they can use their Ferrochemical Bend Alloy to store energy. Alimantic Gold is said to be a very surreal experience when you're burning it. It shows you a gold shadow, which is a version of yourself if you had made different choices in your past. And you're able to see out of your gold shadow's eyes and your own eyes and think with your gold shadow's mind and your own mind at once. The ability expands your mind enough that you can actually parse the all the information that you're getting. But it's still said to be a very surreal and kind of eerie experience. And then Ferrochemical Bend Alloy basically lets you eat like an anime character. You can just start storing your calories in your Bend Alloy mind while you're stuffing your face with food. And you can do the same thing with liquid like water, but you have to use a separate Bend Alloy mind if you do that. These powers don't have any synergy that I could see. Aftertaste is going to C tier. Next we have Rival Self. Rival Selfs can use their Alimantic Gold to reveal their past self, and they can use their Ferrochemical Pewter to store physical strength. Once again, these two powers don't have any synergy that I can see. Maybe by storing your strength in your Pewter Mind and then burning your gold, you could see a different gold shadow than you would if you were just being normal or if you were tapping your strength. So maybe you could glean some additional information off of the gold shadow, depending on if you're storing, tapping, or just being your normal self. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's not, doesn't seem very good. It's going in C tier as well. Next up, we have Paladin. Paladins can use their Alimantic Pewter to increase their physical strength, and they can use their Ferrochemical Nicrosil to store Investiture. Alimantic Pewter is a great Alimantic ability. Alimantic Pewter increases your physical strength as well as your healing factor. It gives you quicker reflexes. Your sense of balance goes up, and you are so much tougher. You can take a lot more damage. It basically makes you a superhuman. And Ferrochemical Nicrosil is one of the other Ferrochemical abilities that we don't 
don't know too much about yet. We know that Nicrosil is used in the medallions that we've seen in the Bands of Mourning, but ferrochemical Nicrosil as a power by itself, I don't think it would be useful at all. Maybe you could store your ability to use your pewter in your Nicrosil mind, but what is that going to do? Not much. I know that some people speculate that you might be able to store the increased strength in the Nicrosil mind, and then you could tap that at a later time to enhance the pewter and make burning pewter even stronger. But yeah, once again, until we see on page, we don't really know. We're going to have the Raffo. The fair chemical ability for Paladin is kind of useless. It's going to have to go at the top of C tier for me. Next up, we have Bello. Bellows can use their Alimantic Nicrosil to enhance the Alimantic burn of a target, and they can use their ferrochemical cadmium to store breath. To use Alimantic Nicrosil, you have to physically touch another Alimancer, and if that other Alimancer is burning an Alimantic Metal when you burn your Nicrosil, the Alimantic Metal that they're using will be used up in an instant. So all the power within that reserve will be used at once. The only way that I can see these two powers benefiting one another is if you're using the cadmium mine to highly oxygenate your blood and let you maybe run quicker to your teammates so that you can nitro burst them. So I think a bellow could be really good on a team of Alamancers, maybe on a team of law enforcement officers and just be constantly boosting your teammates. I don't really see it benefiting the Twinborn in day-to-day -day life outside of combat combat situations. It's so similar to Breathtaker that I'm actually going to put it in A tier right behind Breathtaker. Next up we have Blood Rush. Blood Rush Twinborn can use their Alimantic Nicrosil to enhance the Alimantic burn of a target and they can use their Ferrochemical Gold to store health. So a Blood Rush would be another Twinborn type that would be great on a team of Alamancers. They could be selfless in helping boost the Alamantic abilities of their teammates. They wouldn't have to really worry about getting injured while they're rushing to the aid of their teammates because as long as they have enough health stored in their Ferrochemical Gold Mind, they can just heal from any damage they take. Okay, I think Blood Rush also has to go in A tier for me. Next up we have Crane Fly. Crane Flies can use their Alimantic Duralum to enhance the current metal being burned within themselves and they can use their ferrochemical nicrosil to store investiture. They are another example of a gnat in the twinborn world because their duralumin is useless to them. Plus their ferrochemical nicrosil I don't think would be useful on its own. So they're going to D tier. Next we have knuckle dragger. Knuckle draggers can use their alimantic pewter to increase their physical strength among other physical attributes and they can use their ferrochemical bronze to store wakefulness. This is an interesting combination because Alamancers that can burn pewter can already do what's called pewter dragging where they basically just flare their pewter for extended periods of time and that lets them stay up for dozens of hours and it also lets them do things like run for 15 plus hours straight. So that already lets them stay up for a very very long time but they will eventually need to sleep. But a knuckle dragger would be able to store up a bunch of wakefulness over time and save it for whenever they start getting tired after pewter dragging for a very long time. And then they could tap all that wakefulness and continue their pewter dragging for another couple days maybe, depending on how much wakefulness they had stored up. It's an interesting combination. I also considered that you might be able to store whatever extra wakefulness you get from burning pewter in your bronze mind and make it easier to store up a bunch of wakefulness. But thinking about it more, I I don't think that you actually gain wakefulness by burning Alimantic Pewter. I think it just lets you ignore the fatigue. Either way, Knuckle Dragger is a pretty cool combination and I'm going to put it all the way in A tier. Next we have Jammer. Jammers can use their Alimantic Copper to hide Alimantic Pulses and they can use their Ferrochemical Nicrosil to store Investiture. As I stated earlier, I don't think that Ferrochemical Nicrosil on its own is useful. So this is kind of like a gnat as well, the more that I think about it, because they basically only have their Alimantic ability. Now the name Jammer came about based on the speculation that they might be able to store their ability to hide alimantic pulses in their nicrosil mind and then they could tap that ability to hide alimantic pulses at the same time as burning alimantic copper which would let them have a larger copper cloud and basically jam a much larger area it will be really interesting to finally learn exactly how ferrochemical nicrosil works on its own uh, maybe in era three for now i'm gonna have to put jammer pretty low it's going to go at the bottom of C tier for me. Next up, we have Quick Draw. Quick Draws can use their Alimantic Steel to push metals, and they can use their Ferrochemical Zinc to store mental speed. I think Quick Draw is a very good combination. So Alimantic Steel is one of the most popular Alimantic abilities. It lets you push on sources of metal. Whenever you burn your steel, you're going to see blue
blue lines coming from your center of self and pointing towards allomantic metals all around you. Allomancers burning steel will often drop bits of metal to the ground and push on them to launch themselves into the air and they'll continue to do that over and over and arc through the air and basically fly. They'll also throw pieces of metal out in front of them and push them rapidly towards their enemies and it can be used as a weapon, basically like a bullet. And I think ferrochemical zinc could be a pretty good power to go along with that. As long as the quick draw stores up enough of their mental speed, then they could make rapid calculations that might allow them to do crazy stunts while they're soaring through the air. Like I could see a quick draw tapping their ferrochemical zinc while they're soaring through the air and calculate whether they could fit through a really narrow opening in a wall and then just steel push and fit through a seemingly impossible little nook to get into a building. I also think it would help them rapidly calculate the trajectory of the metal objects that they're pushing out towards their enemies. Maybe they could push a piece of metal past their enemy, making their enemy think that they missed only to have the piece of metal bounce off and ricochet off of something behind the enemy and strike them in the back. That'd be actually really cool. They could do like trick shots and things. Of course, storing up your mental speed could kind of be a hindrance. You would want to do it in a safe area, right? So that you're not going to be attacked or something while you're storing your mental speed. In the modern day world, you could just sit and watch some comedy movie or maybe like a reality show or something that doesn't require a lot of uh, mental speed to understand what's going on. So it wouldn't be too bad. But in era one and era two of Skadriel, it might be a little more difficult to store up. I guess you could just store like 10% of your mental speed at all times and just be a little slower in your day-to-day -day life. But then you could tap that all at once and become a super genius for a very short amount of time whenever you need to. Yeah, I think quick draw is going in S tier. Last but not least, we have Thespian. Thespian Twinborn can use their Alimantic Zinc to riot the emotions of others and they can use their ferrochemical copper to store memories. A Thespian Twinborn would be a great performer or an orator, right? They could hop on stage, remember every single line thanks to their ferrochemical copper. They could just be pulling those lines as they're going through their speech or their performance, and they could be rioting the emotions of the crowd, making them feel more attentive and riot all of their feel-good emotions and give them an amazing show. They'd be the perfect bard. And I think they would even hold up pretty well in a combat situation. If they found themselves in a fight, they could just riot feel in their enemy and make the enemy want to back down and become intimidated. I actually really like this combination. This is going to be an S tier and this might be the first non-combat specific Twinborn type that I've put in S tier. I think it's going to go at the bottom of S tier though. Okay, there you have it. That is my final Twinborn tier ranking for part 14 of the series. These are just my thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my placement and how you would move these Twinborn combinations around. And here is the combined tier list for the 14 parts that we've done so far. We only have two more parts to go. And in part 16, I'm going to revisit the compounder types as well as rearrange the final uh, tier ranking for the combined parts. So if you think that these types should be rearranged, let me know in the comments because I plan on searching through the comments for each type and reading people's reasoning for that type going up or down in the tier ranking. And that'll help me make my final decision in on the final tier list. I also want to remind you that you can get a free audiobook thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Audible. All you have to do is use the link in the description below and sign up for an Audible premium plus 30 day free trial. After you sign up, Audible will give you a credit and you can use this credit to get any audiobook in their catalog absolutely free. And this book is yours to keep even if you cancel your Audible membership. Being an Audible member also gives you access to the Audible Plus catalog, which includes thousands of other audiobooks and podcasts. Audible is one of my favorite services. I use it every single day. I love that it allows you to multitask while you're listening to your favorite books. So once again, claim your free audiobook today by using the link in the description below. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in part 15.